Libertarian candidate for Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Well, okay. First of all, you know, I had we, you had this fabulous meal here, and I really enjoyed it. And I remember right before that, we all thanked God for that food. But it also occurred to me that there's someone else we should thank, and, and people don't really think about when they sit down to eat. And that's all the farmers, because I mean, in order for you know, God's creation to bring that food to us, there's someone in between there, and that's the people that grow the, grow the crops, raise the farm animals, and the people in between who bring things to market. You know, that's important. So it's kind of appropriate that I sit down, and it all begins with a big dinner, you know, so it kind of made me think about that. Um, I don't see too much in the way of um, agriculture where I live, though it's starting to increase, and that's in Detroit. Um, and partially as um, it, it kind of a pleasant a little silver lining within the dark cloud of the depression that we're in. Um, and so, you know, I do get a little glimpse there in Detroit. But um, now I have to really why I'm running for Secretary of State and, you know, why, why would I pick that office to run for? Why do I run as a libertarian? Those things have to be coming to people's minds as well. Well, there's one issue that a lot of people may not be that aware of, and it, it just doesn't get much attention um, outside of certain people kind of, you know, within the political um, inside. And that is what I like to call dangerous ID. The next Secretary of State will have 30 days to decide whether or not Michigan is enrolled in something called the Real ID Act. Now, the Real ID Act was passed back in 2005 at the federal level. But essentially what it is, is it's a plan to transform all state identification, state driver's licenses, state ID, into national ID. It would still, still say Michigan on it, and the ID in Ohio would still say Ohio on it and so forth. But it would really be a national ID card. Um, in addition to that, it's not just that we have now a card that would be something that was state that's now been federalized, but you also then have a database that is shared um, among all the other states and got more agencies now. It becomes a big one-stop shop for identity thieves. But that isn't where it ends. We have something called the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative, which actually then results in that information being shared internationally. So you go there, you just want to drive, and suddenly you're enrolled in a database that's going out to you know people all over the world, public and private, huge institutions, and who knows where it's going or who has access to it anymore. Furthermore, there's something called an RFID chip um, that's already been um, being field tested through something called the Enhanced Driver's License. And one of the big um, plus points that it's promoted as is, hey, you can use this as a passport. Well, you know what? I have a passport. I can use passport as a passport. I don't need to use my driver's license as a passport. And the big difference is I carry a passport with me when I'm planning on leaving the country. Driver's license I need to have with me essentially all the time. I need a driver's license when I get in my car to drive here, for instance, if I'm driving to work. If let's say I'm, let's say I'm even on foot, but I want to go someplace and use my credit card, or I, or I need to go to a bank, I may have to show my ID. Well, I end up using my driver's license for that. So you're being tracked by the RFID chip. But I know I know a lot of people here are already aware of that because they use them in, in cattle. So I, you know, I ask you, do you really feel like being treated like cattle? I don't. Um, so I would be against Michigan adopting the Real ID Act when I go in as Secretary of State, and I would be against um, you know expanding the RFID chip into other driver's licenses and so forth. Um, I'd also be for minimizing the collection of biometric information. Um, a lot of people may not realize this unless you have some of the newer cameras. But for instance, you can put a pin, put a, point a camera at someone's face. Or, I mean, add someone in general, and little squares will start popping up around all the faces. The software and the little camera recognizes people's faces. Now, that just recognizes a face from a non-face, but there's technology out there that recognizes your face from everybody else's, just like I could recognize one individual's face from everyone else's. Well, if you scan images with a high enough level of resolution, and you're putting them in driver's license, Suddenly, all those cameras up there, as they improve in resolution, I know a lot of the traffic cameras are real fuzzy and they don't get much. A lot of security cameras aren't, but that's all improving. They, that can be scanned, go into that database, and all of a sudden you can be tracked anywhere you go in the world as you. They know where you're going. So if you don't have the RFID chip with you that has um, a little number you can be 
tracked around by. Now they can track you by your face. So I'm for minimizing the collection of biometric information as far as anything that the Secretary of State collects that is not essential for the functions of the Secretary of State. I just believe in deleting from the entire database. I don't think um, we need to store more information about people than is necessary. Now you might say, but what about protecting us from criminals and all that? That's fine. If someone commits a crime, they forfeited their privacy at that point. Sure, we already give criminals tethers and so on. Um, you know, to you know, keep track of their movements if they're under house arrest or they're um, on work release and so on. So I understand that's a different story. But I don't think innocent people should be first assumed guilty and actually never presumed innocent then in making that mandatory as something everyone must carry in order to buy and sell. Um, so that's one of the big motivators as to why I'm running for Secretary of State is to raise attention to that issue. And obviously, if I got elected, I would be acting on that issue. Um, another thing is why a libertarian Secretary of State candidate, you know, a, a candidate from when the major parties might share my platform um, on other things. But why a libertarian Secretary of State? Well, recently, if you think back, just one, one example, there was this big flap over some group calling themselves the Tea Party, and they meant a political party that did not mean the Tea Party movement, which is a nonpartisan political movement, but rather the Tea Political Party. And there is a um, vote by the Board of Canvassers. It was split right down party lines. Republicans against putting them on the ballot, Democrats in favor. The Republicans had something to lose by having this party on the ballot because it might take some of their votes away. The Democrats had something to gain by having that party on the ballot for the same reason. Well, um, you know, whether or not they made the right decision is clouded by the fact that everything's down partisan lines. So were they motivated by their own partisan interest or was it by doing the right thing? Well, as a libertarian or as any minor party person in there, any conflict between the major parties, um, we'd be honest referees in. Furthermore, I'd even go as far as saying if you want me to resign, or actually, I just will anyway, resign my involvement with my own party when selected, that'd be fine too. I think the Secretary of State should be totally neutral and take because we're overseeing elections. We want to be fair and open about our elections um, for more transparency and vote counting. Um, I definitely am happy that we still have paper ballots that, go, that get electronically counted, but we have paper ballots because in the end, if there is a dispute, you have no transparency once you just have information being recorded in a system without any tangible artifact left over. So that's another um, issue we should bring to light. Now, as far as services, and most people aren't as interested in the laws that I already spoke about as they are in simply the services they actually deal with when they go to a Secretary of State office. Well, um, one thing I'd like to do is make services more available for more people in more places without costing any more money. And I have an idea on how to do that. If we franchised offices, essentially like, you know, you have basically a big company will let people own a business but use their label and sell their products. That's what I mean in that sense of franchising. If the Secretary of State would set up a similar system with local offices, that, or even let's say it could be a business, you already own a store, and you pass our um, security clearance and so on, and you want to have also provide Secretary of State services at your store. You should be able to do that. So, you know, for instance, especially if you live in a, a small community, Secretary of State offices, you might only have one for a huge area and have to travel a long way to get there because that's just how they're set up. But if you have like kind of a mini office, in your local area and you just need to get, you know, a driver's registration taken care of, a plate, and so on, you know, you could just go to one of these mini offices. Um, I would be for basically having the same standards set for the private um, service as I would for the public service as far as um, what level of um, trustworthiness is required and, um, and how well to protect your privacy. Um, and actually, it might seem like kind of a crazy, extreme idea, but it's already being done to a certain degree. Car dealerships, for instance, will actually issue um, titles and they will enter, issue um, license plates directly from the car dealership when you buy a car. So it's not something that hasn't been tried to some degree already. Um, so thank you very much for your time. And if you want to learn more about me, go to scottybowman.org. That's S-C-O-T-T-Y. 
B O M A N, no W, dot org. Thank you very much. Well, at this point, we've reached our halfway point.